you guys, today is the day. Today is the day that I am going to finally, finally set up one of my green stock vertical planters. Okay, y'all, I ordered, I think, two green stock planters, like, at least a year ago, back when we lived in Florida. And the plan was I was gonna set them up in my garden area, kind of almost like end caps to the long raised beds I had. But we ended up moving to Tennessee before I ever got to use them. Because I think I got them, I'm pretty sure I got them on a sale, like end of the season or something like that. I got a really good deal on them. But then in the process of packing and preparing for the move, I realized, you know what? I don't know when I'm gonna be ready to actually start a garden when we get to Tennessee. I don't know what the seasons are like. I don't, I just don't know. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna gift these to my neighbors, a lovely couple who's doing their own homesteading on about a quarter of an acre in Southwest Florida. And you know, I'm gonna bless them with this. And when I'm ready, I'll go ahead and order some more for myself in Tennessee. And this company, it's a family run company, Greenstock. They are actually based in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is a couple of hours away from where I live. So I thought, yeah, yeah, I can wait. I'll be patient because we moved here in the winter. It was cold. I wasn't growing anything at that time. So it was fine. I could wait. So I ordered three green stalks in this beige color and they all arrived at the beginning of May, which was a month and a half ago. <laughs> and I am just now at the point where I have the time to get it all set up. Now, one thing I may have mentioned in a previous video or two is the fact that this property our whole property like they're just there's slopes and hills and like there's i don't think there's any any flat ground anywhere on this property with the exception of where the house the house foundation <laughs> and the barn those may be the only two there could be a couple more spots like further back maybe but in terms of where I want my immediate garden area to be, uh, no, it is all sloped. So admittedly, one of the things that was holding me back a little bit was the fact that I knew I would have to figure out, first of all, where I wanted to put it. Second of all, get that area level and, you know, then just kind of set up some bricks or something to set the green stock on top of so that it would be level. Um, because I'll show you real quick. Uh, so here's a, a surface that I created. It's a level surface that, and I have my little level here. I use this to, just to make sure. Um, but the green stock, you can buy it just by itself and you'll see how it all comes together towards the end. But this is a spinner. And what's cool about this is that once you set up the green stock, you can just stand there and just spin it around. It's kind of like one of those, um, you know, carousel type um, sales racks at a store. It works when it comes to making sure that all of your plants get adequate sun. This is a tube that comes out the bottom because this, as you may see, has lots of little holes. And as I put it together, I'll show you all the holes that exist to ensure that water flows from the top down and any excess water then comes out of this tube and the overflow will just go into the ground and not, you know, saturate the, the ground immediately beneath the green stock. I want to just make it very clear. This is something, this is a wonderful tool to use no matter where you are. If you can have access to enough space, like something like 16 by 16 inches of space for the ground, and then vertically, um, I don't recall how tall it is, but I'll show you that at the end as well. 
um, and access to some sun and fresh air, you can grow lots and lots of food in these green stocks. And it is not something that's limited to people who live in a rural area. It's not limited to people who live in a, a, a townhouse or in the suburbs. Really, you can use this just about anywhere, like I said. So that's one of the things I really, I really, really like about this product that I'm very excited about. Because yes, I live on five acres. I am very, 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 very grateful and blessed to be on five acres of land. However, a good portion of that land, about three acres of it, almost, yeah, about three acres of it is actually pasture that is set aside specifically for growing grass for hay and for feeding larger animals, um, which we plan to add to the homestead within the next six months to a year. Um, the remaining two acres, yes, there's still plenty of space there as well. Part of it is taken up by a barn and there's also there are spaces that I have set aside for my chickens to be able to free range. However, I think that one of the things that's really wonderful about gardening is variety. I eventually, I do have in my mind an idea, a plan, a design of how I really want this to all look and lay out eventually, but part of that plan includes having kind of a hodgepodge of different um, types of garden spaces, whether it's low raised beds or tall vertical planters like this, or um, hip level elevated raised beds. There are all sorts of different, um, just there, there's a lot of variety that I look forward to including in my garden. And this is, this green stock is definitely a part of that process. One of the things that they include as part of this um, are these little, they're kind of like little spacers, but they actually serve to um, direct the water. There are these tiny holes on the edges that also helps to direct the water downward um, and avoid any kind of overflow. And then the makers of green stock recommend using uh, this kind of soil. It's called Fox Farm Soil and Fertilizing Company Happy Frog Potting Soil, which I purchased this from Amazon. It's not a, it's not cheap. I will tell you that now. I will leave a link down below if you'd like to order some yourself, but it's definitely something I didn't want to risk. This being my first time using the green stock, I wanted to make sure that I used what was recommended. And if in the future, as I become more accustomed to using it and become more familiar with how it really works, maybe I'll experiment a little bit more. But for this, this go around, I'm gonna go ahead and just use what they recommend. Okay, so I'm gonna get you guys set up so that you can just watch me put it together. Okay, you guys, there's just a few more things I wanna share with you before I get started with assembling this green stock. First of all, when your package arrives with the green stock, you will be greeted by a picture of the person who packaged it for you. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Carl, I really appreciate you. And then the box will also include um, an envelope that contains a number of things. Depending on how many of the vertical planters you purchased, I think you receive one package of seeds for every planter. So I received two of the Italian parsley packets and I also received one of the butter crunch lettuce. I've not opened them yet, but I'll get to that eventually. Then they also will send a number of these stickers, which are really cute. I'm not a big sticker person myself, but I think these are really good to share with, you know, maybe some kids who, um, are interested in gardening or maybe you want to teach them about gardening get them interested in it it's just kind of fun and then they include also this vertical planter instructions pamphlet I guess you can call it it's six pages just folds out let me back up a little bit folds out like this and just shows you the potential of what you can grow after you set it up properly it also includes a really nice list of what you can grow in the original versus the leaf version of the vertical planter. I have the original, has deeper wells for the soil and the plants to grow in, 
and the leaf version is just a little bit more shallow but anything you can grow in the leaf you can also grow in the original so i think that's really cool then the back shows you the peterson family they are the family that uh, that owns this company they're based out of knoxville tennessee and then finally in may of this year they published i believe for the first time yep it says issue 1 2023 their green stock magazine now this magazine is really neat it has a lot of great information in it i believe you have to place an order of 100 dollars or more in order to receive the magazine for free which is not honestly hard to do because um even on their best sale days one green stock will cost about 100 dollars and um, in addition to purchasing the green stock, the spinner that I showed earlier, that is sold separately. And I believe those are $40 each. They have other versions that have wheels on them that, you know, to make it more mobile. If you're actually using this on a surface that's not grass, like a, like a turf or, um, you know, on a solid surface. So, uh, so that's cool. But yeah, this magazine, I was really impressed by this. It contains articles that are written by um, several YouTubers that I like to follow who use green stocks. It also includes contributions from the, um, the creator's wife who contributed, I believe four or five different recipes in here. All that look, they all look really good. So definitely check it out. Highly recommend it. I already drew up a little schematic of what I think I want to put in here. And I have three green stocks, so there's three different plans, but I think for this first one, hmm. So here's my little wheelbarrow shopping cart. I'm going to plant some of this zucchini. And it looks like I have a couple of cucumbers. These onions are just, that was an experiment. I'm not really planning on doing anything with that. Then we have some watermelon here. Let's see if we can get that in the photo. Yeah. There's watermelon here, lots of lettuce. And then these are, looking sad I don't know if these are gonna make it I have a, a couple peppers right in here but then I also have these um, bush beans so we're gonna see if we can get those in the ground additionally so in addition to those items sorry I'm a little shiny it's pretty pretty humid out here but in addition to those items I have my little package of labels so I can label everything but I'm also going to put some amaranth in there the amaranth is going to be planted next to, I'm going to have one of these next to each of the squash zucchini that I plant because these act as kind of a decoy. Um, they attract squash bugs. If the squash bugs all attack the amaranth plant, then that means that hopefully they won't get to the squash. So that's my strategy at least. Hopefully it'll work. All right.
I know I sped it up a bit here, but you may notice that as I am removing each of the seedlings from their original pots, I am placing them towards the outer edge of each level of the green stalks. And the reason being, the, each of these levels are going to be placed one on top of the other. It'll be a lot easier to visualize towards the end. And it started to get pretty dark once I got to the last tiers, but here you can see my son's helping me stack the very last ones on top. And at the very top there, you can see the reservoir where we add the water. Hey you guys, so before I close out this video, I wanted to give you a quick update on the status of the green stock that I installed. I actually filmed the earlier part of this video two weeks ago, so in mid-June. Today is the last day of June, June 30th, and here is what we have right now. Look at all of that growth, predominantly among the beans, but this lettuce, look at that. Lots of progress going on here. Also, a lot of the zucchini is coming in too, which I'm very, very excited about love zucchini um kind of surprised but <laughs> i've had some watermelon coming in i don't see any fruits yet but the plants themselves are 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 growing and even my little bits of corn one thing i didn't do when i filmed this earlier is tell you exactly what i planted on each level i know i told you i had a plan it was all written out i ended up changing it just kind of going off the cuff by what i wanted to do at the moment so what I'll do next is I'll actually show you um, tier by tier what I planted and uh, so you'll see what we got here. Starting here at the top we have some royal burgundy beans. These are bush beans. I put two in this, um, I don't know what you call it, pod or whatever. Oops, it's kind of mingling with the lettuce over there. And you can already see some of the little buds that are coming in. Isn't that amazing? It grows so quickly. I think in the future, like they say you can put up to three bush beans in a single spot, but I, I think it's probably better to just do one or two. So I think that's what I'll do next time. All right, and then this lettuce, it's looking a little sad in parts. It's got some holes. Let's see if I can show you. Yeah, a couple holes in here. I have noticed some ants in this soil, so I'm not sure if that's what's contributing to this. But, I mean, these this lettuce, I could harvest this lettuce now. It's actually... And actually, I think I probably will. I think I am going to take this as part of my dinner tonight. But this is, uh, oh, missing a label. I'm pretty sure I have the same exact lettuce over here. It is called Rouge d'Hiver. Rouge, Rouge d'Hiver. It's uh, red winter, basically, in French. Um, all right, so here we have another royal burgundy. Oh, and this one, you can see even more clearly it's coming along that's so nice and then here's another of the same lettuce so it looks like on this top tier i just alternated between those two plants all right so then on this next tier we have bronze beauty lettuce which i've never grown this before ever it's very interesting um it's green with like a this reddish hue on it uh, but it's also kind of like, I don't know, the shape of the leaves is different, but I'm excited to try it. I'm also going to harvest this for like a mixed green salad tonight. Here we have some tender green bush beans, and I don't know what's going on here. Why is this soil coming apart? But there we go. Anyway, but look, you can see some of the beans already starting to form here. So that's exciting. I um, think this guy needs a little bit more, probably water. I'm not sure. We have had some really strange um, temperature fluctuations recently. And this morning we actually had a really heavy downpour for about three hours straight after not having rain for a couple days. So I'm sure these guys are reacting to that. So on this level, it looks like I alternated between, yeah, the bronze beauty and the tender green bush beans. So yeah, again, you can see these beans are already starting to come in here. It's pretty cool. 
So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and harvest some of this lettuce tonight for sure. All right, so in the third level, what we have is the Thai long bean. Now this is said to be a bush bean. The beans themselves are supposed to be very long. So it'll be interesting to see if this all grows out as expected, what that'll look like. I also have the Yeti Cool lettuce, which again, I've, I've never grown that before either. Um, these, they seem like just very tender leaves. I'm gonna let these grow out a little bit more, but I may just grab a couple of uh, leaves for my salad tonight. All right, here again, the Thai long bean. Again, this guy, I don't know what it is. Um, you might be able to see, I'm not sure if you can tell, but I put some vermicompost in here um, about a week after planting everything in. I don't know if I need to maybe add some mulch to these guys to help retain the water or what. I'm gonna try something, I don't know yet. So here we have another um, medical lettuce, and this one is obviously much larger and just looks healthier, slightly healthier than the other one. So I'm not sure if if it just got more sun or water than the other for some reason, but, and then this one is even bigger. Like these, I'm definitely going to harvest tonight or this afternoon. So yeah. Okay, so now we're on the fourth level where I have my little amaranth burgundy. That's coming up nicely. All these little seedlings. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna keep all of them because I don't think that would be really conducive to this little section, but I will, I'll see if I can transplant some of it. Um, all right, and then we have a Ford Hook zucchini plant here followed by another Ford Hook zucchini plant. You can kind of see, oops, sorry, big leaf in the camera there. You can kind of see right here where some of those flowers should be coming in. All right, here, now one thing I'm a little concerned about, the leaves for this zucchini are already pretty big. And I have a Boston pickling cucumber plant right here that seems to be getting shaded out. So, um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that. I might, I don't know. I'm just gonna keep monitoring it and see, see if I might need to just transplant that out of here and give it its own space. Here's another um, container with amaranth. Now these amaranth seeds were so tiny. I didn't realize I put so many in here, but yeah, I'm gonna have to, to take some of those out because they're not gonna all survive in that small space. And then here, <laughs> You might find it funny, but I just wanted to try it. In this spot, I decided to put some mini blue popcorn. This is a, um, it's gonna grow up to be just a, a corn cob, a bunch of little, maybe, I don't know, two to three inches in length. And you're supposed to be able to dry it out and make it into popcorn. So <laughs> we'll see if that works. Now for this bottom tier, here's where I decided to add some small watermelons. We have a sugar baby watermelon plant here and also a strawberry watermelon plant. Here's some more amaranth. This one is a, it's an amaranth Chinese multicolor. Um, you can actually eat this if you want. It's a, it is edible, but I mo mostly, I put it there primarily to serve as a deterrent. For squash bugs that may want to get this other Ford Hook zucchini plant here because amaranth attracts squash bugs. And then here's another uh, corn that I planted. This is called strawberry corn. It's going to be red in color. And you can kind of see that actually one of the kernels kind of came up. It's red, it's kind of burgundy color. Um, this is also a, a like a popcorn variety. Again, I don't know if it's really going to work i i have my doubts but i think it would be kind of cool if it actually worked out to grow some popcorn in this really small space so anyway this is what it looks like after just two weeks of transplanting all those seedlings in here uh yeah so um and then you may be wondering kind of what where i'm standing at the moment because this looks a little different well i decided i think that same evening 
to transplant some of the other lettuces that didn't fit into some of these grow bags that I have. And it's interesting how a lot of these lettuces, they're just not thriving as much as they are in the green stock. I know that with grow bags, the soil tends to dry out quite a bit faster, but even, and I, I can't say I've been the best at watering them every day or making sure that they're watered every day, but they're definitely looking better right now than they did yesterday <laughs> after the rain we had earlier this morning. Okay, now here we have a, it's called a Natsu Fushinari Cucumber. I think it's basically supposed to grow up to be a, like an English cucumber, really long and slender. Um, so this soil, I think the soil is definitely missing a little something, something. So, um, cause it's definitely moist enough. And again, I know we had quite a bit of rain earlier. So I am going to just add some more compost to this and also... Yeah, I'm j I'll just, I'll pay more attention to it from a watering perspective. I think it's getting enough sun. Right now, where we are, there's a, a big old oak tree um, that's offering some shade. And that is intentional because I know with, especially lettuce, they, they need exposure to sun, but they don't need, they don't want to have a ton of exposure to sun or else they will wilt or bolt. They'll they can do one of two things. They can bolt really quickly, which is another word saying grow really rapidly to be very tall and basically go to seed so that they're not really edible, it's too bitter, or they'll just wilt and die. So it's kind of that delicate balance. So anyway, this area I put up with the some fencing that I have, I decided to set up just sort of a squared off area. I'm not gonna show you everything because there are a few things I don't want you to see just yet. Um, <laughs> but here are, um, well, yeah, I guess you can see on the other side of the fence, these are all of those tomato cages that I found the other day. I just have them set up here. Um, still need to get them cleaned up and prepared for use. If you know, they're, I think they're still usable, at least 90% of them are. Then I also set down this landscape fabric. I clearly ran out of it, but I'm gonna, <laughs> I ordered more. It should be arriving either tomorrow or um, early next week. So I'm gonna lay that down across the rest of this space. And my plan, if you couldn't kind of tell with these wooden boards here, these are just cedar fence pickets. I'm going to use these to build some raised beds in this space, three to be exact. And my plan is to have three 12 by two beds. I'm going to set up the other green stalks that I have in this space as well. And I am pretty confident I will be using even more of the grow bags that I have. So I will include links to the green stock, the grow bags, um, and anything else that I reference in this video that you, you know, may be interested in purchasing. I'll put links to those in the description. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.